Hello and welcome back to yet another session with me on the Delta Live Tables where we are going to see how we can create our first Delta Live Table Pipeline. So this is the hands-on video where we are going to understand the different components on how we can create a Delta Live Table Pipeline and we have already gone through the theory. So now the practical would be very easy. So let's move ahead. But before moving ahead, I do recommend all of you guys to connect with me on LinkedIn as well as in case you guys want to book any one-on-one -on -one session regarding maybe the resume review or maybe a technical session you guys can use topmate apart from that if you want to check out my paid courses you can check bhavna baby at the rate graphy.com also you guys can check out my youtube channel for lots of free and amazing content so let's move ahead i will go back into my databricks workspace where we are going to start working on the Delta live table pipeline. So now here if you see this is a notebook Okay, so you can directly go to your workspace over here and create a notebook. So here in this particular notebook We are going to use baby names data set Right here. We are going to use baby names data set and we are going to cre create a traditional architecture of bronze silver and the gold layer Using this particular data set which will be nothing but the DLT uh pipeline now here remember that since it's a delta live table you cannot run it interactively so when i say interactively you cannot create a cluster and run these cells one by one over here because it's a delta live table pipeline for that what you need to do is in order to run a delta live pipeline you need to create a pipeline so if you go to delta live tables in the workflow or you can directly click on delta live tables here so you need to create a pipeline in order to run that so that part we will cover in the upcoming video here we are going to see the first part which is the code part so if i go back over here right import dlt so this is very important everything you do in the databricks notebook the import uh Importing DLT is mandatory. I'll just zoom it so that you can see it even better Import DLT is something that is very much mandatory because you are going to use this Delta live tables inbuilt module by the Databricks everywhere Right and similarly from PySpark.sql.functions import star. I'm importing everything Because we are using it ahead uh, from the PySpark sql.function. So now here I'm just uh, doing import OS so here it is nothing but it's just downloading the data set so here if you see I'm just downloading the data set so if you look at this unity catalog volume path right now your workspace should be unity catalog enabled so this is the path of the volume in the unity catalog data set download URL so this is the URL at which at which my data set is present even if I copy it and I paste it on um, in the browser you will see the data set so this is nothing but this is the data set which you see got downloaded over here and let me just open it so if you see this is the data set which has year first name country sex and the count so this is the data set that we are trying to use so from this particular location right i want to download the data set and my downloaded file name would be rose.csv and then once it gets downloaded I am trying I am trying to do what I am trying to put the data set in the volume over here now if you come down this is the main path part over here from where DLT starts actually in just raw data into the table so the very first thing that I need to do whenever you are creating a Delta live table so first of all remember that all of the code that you see here should be in one language it cannot happen that the first part is in SQL the other part is in Python it's going to fail it doesn't work like that in the DLT so the first part is you have the data set data set you can download keep it yourself manually in DBFS in volume or you, or you can do it programmatically like I have done in this particular set cell anything is fine so this is not an important part over here the important part starts from here so to declare a DLT table to declare a DLT table you need to use this decorator this command it is mandatory it is the syntax at the rate DLT dot table so whenever you have to create a table you are always going to use at the rate DLT dot table there is no uh, other way around inside that you will put a comment this comment is nothing but it's a 
declaration for your table so when i said declaration it's just a comment for your table so if you see in the comment we have put popular baby first names in the new york this data was ingested from new york state department of health right it is just a comment for your table and then how do you write the dlt code you are going to write python functions over here so if you see this def baby names raw right baby names raw this is the function but this is also my dlt table name so first of all here what i have done i have declared my dlt table at the rate dlt dot table and after that what i have written i have written def baby underscore names underscore raw now this is a function name this is a python function name but at the same time this function name is also will be used as my dlt table name that will be created here now here i'm saying df is equals to spark dot read i'm just reading this volume path over here header true infer schema is true so this is nothing but it's a just a data frame read that is happening here and then df underscore renamed column and then i'm just renaming creating a new column first name uh, and instead of space we are giving it as an underscore just a renaming a column and return df renamed column okay so here what we have done we have read the data set renamed a column okay we have just renamed a column removed the space from the first name added an underscore and returned the data frame now remember whenever you create a python function the name of the function will denote the name of your table and at the same time your function should always return a data frame your function should always return a data frame your data if you see this return this is a function this is doing these three these steps and then this is returning df renamed column so your function should always return our data frame now this data frame will be loaded in the table named as baby names row so this is where you are ingesting the data into a table in dlt and it's a delta table now if you see this clean and prepare data now this is the raw layer now this is the clean layer or this is the silver layer again i want to create a another table right so i'm again going to write dlt dot table over here this is a comment new york popular baby first data cleaned and prepared for analysis now here i'm going to do what i am saying at the rate dlt dot expect valid first name first name is not null now here i am adding dlt expectations that we discussed right so we have already discussed that this dlt expectation is nothing but the test cases now this is how you are placing the test cases now remember how important that theory was that i shared that i shared with you guys right so if i go back again here to the ppt if you see the very first thing that we are doing is we have created this bronze layer then we have created this silver layer and in this silver layer here i am also placing the expectations which is the test cases and then we'll create the gold layer as well so let's go to the expectations this is where the expectation is right so expectations are the test that ensures the data quality so how it is how it is uh, in fact that time i also showed you so if you see here i also gave you the syntax on how it is done how expectations are done you know this is the syntax right now if i go back you see at the rate dlt dot expect expect valid first name that the first name should not be null at the rate dlt expect or fail valid count count should be greater than 0 if the valid record count is greater than 0 then it's pass otherwise it's fail this is the test cases that we are putting and then def now this is the function this function what it is going to do it is going to return a data frame and this data frame will be stored as a silver table and the name of the table will be baby names prepared so if you see this baby names prepared return dlt dot read baby names raw so baby names raw is what this is this table that we have done at the that we have created at the top baby names raw with column renamed year to year of birth we have we are just renaming the column and select year of the birth first name and the count right 
this is what it is returning and this is getting stored in another silver table over here which is baby names prepared similarly top baby names 2021 now this is the gold layer again i need to create another table so that's why i'm saying dlt dot table in the comment we are just defining the comment for the table and then again a function which is nothing but this function name is nothing but it's a gold table name again it has to return a data frame dlt dot read baby names prepared baby names prepared is this table the silver table that we created dot filter dot group by dot aggregate dot sort dot limit so these are the transformations that we are applying right we are reading that table we are reading that table as a data frame and then we are applying these transformation and it is returning a data frame itself and then we are getting top baby names of 2021 now this is again stored as a gold table now this is exactly how you write a delta live table pipeline now in the next video we are going to run this pipeline so stay tuned